much of human nature for us is if somebody wrongs us for us to get them back if somebody crosses us for us to cross them in another way or to not forgive those that have wronged us even though as a believer I am called to forgive it can be difficult today we're going to teach on one of Jesus's most common known principles and you may know it as the golden rule now, isn't that the one that says do unto others as they have done to you or you know if somebody has wronged me I am to wrong them back however someone treats me I'm to treat them the same way is that what Jesus taught or was it different see most of us have battled that conflict within us if somebody's done us wrong do we want to get them back and that's human nature friends that is what our flesh desires we've been wronged then we've got to inflict some punishment inflict some pain get someone else back for how they've treated us but as with most of human nature Christ teaches us a different way, a way to fight that inclination. And today our golden rule comes from Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. We are still on Jesus' Sermon on the Mount teaching, soon to be finishing up there. My name is Gerald. I welcome you. I'm Pastor Innovate Church. We're located in Kannapolis, North Carolina, focusing online to reach you who are not in church today. For whatever reason that may be, our heart and our hope is to bring the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to you wherever it is you are, because wherever we are gathered together, we are the church. So welcome friends, whether you're a believer, whether you're not, we just pray that you are blessed and encouraged by this word today and influenced by the words of Christ as we try to bring them to you in honor of him. So again, we're still look, still in chapter uh, 7 of Matthew's gospel. Again, we're just going to look at verse 12 mainly today where he says, So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. So do to others what you want them to do to you. Again, many of us have heard that, but are we living that way? Where did the rule come from? How should we live in a way that reflects this? Again, many of us know this verse because we've just heard someone else quote it to us or we've quoted it ourselves, not even knowing that it comes from Jesus' teaching. There are other religions that even use different influence or different ways of putting this text, most of them in a negative context, whereas Jesus is telling you to be active. Most are saying, don't respond in this way. Jesus is saying, respond this way. So to understand the full teaching of Jesus, it's always good to look at the full context. See if what he's saying here points back to any other teaching. Because many a times, myself included, we are all about just reading straight through Scripture, especially whenever we come upon a word that is so familiar to us as this one. Oh yeah, I've heard that before. Without really looking at the words that are in the verse. So depending on your, your version, you may have some different wording. You may have this text here, verse 12 included in a paragraph or it may be in a sentence by itself and some of these things are clues as to what it's pointing to for us to look at pertaining to this how we are to treat others in the version i'm using today the english standard version it uses the word so king james uses the word therefore the greek actually translates into both of those words but the idea here is if there is a so or a therefore or an account of, then it is likely pointing to another text or pointing to another teaching. So we've got to find out what that cause is for this effect. 
So some may say, and doing my study on this, some of us may look at it and say, well, it only points back to the ask and receive teaching that we looked at last week with verses uh, 7, 7 through 11, where, you know, you're to make your request known to God and to ask and receive whatever we ask in his name, all that. But others and myself believe that it points back to Jesus's entire Sermon on the Mount teaching. After he gets done with the, the uh, Beatitudes, the blessed are you, then in Matthew chapter 5 verse 17, he teaches about the prophets and the law. And he says that he did not come to get rid of, but to fulfill the law and the prophets. And we taught on this almost seven months ago now but looking at matthew chapter 5 verse 17 he says don't think that i came to abolish the law or the prophets i did not come to abolish but fulfill and the reason i bring this up is because in today's word he uses these same terms listen to this matthew chapter 7 verse 12 today's verse so whatever you wish others would do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets. So the way that I see this and the way that others see this is these are bookend statements. Again, Matthew has either compiled the Sermon on the Mount as a bunch of teachings all together of Jesus over time, because Luke actually records it as well, but he records a much shorter version. But yet the teachings are throughout the other Gospels as well, just at different times. But here in Matthew's gospel, we have both of these scriptures sort of like bookends. It begins with, I came to fulfill the law and the prophets, not to abolish it. And then here at the book, at the end of it, he says, for this is the law and the prophets, for us to do unto others how we wish they would do unto us. My paraphrase. Now, if you remember, the law and the prophets were inclusive for the Hebrew scriptures. The law speaks about Moses' first five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Sorry, I want to read it to make sure I don't misquote the order there. And then all the other historical books combined, including the prophetic books, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Micah, the, even the minor prophets there like Micah. It's what we would call our Old Testament today, combining the, the historical books of the Jewish people, primarily, before Jesus came. Once Jesus comes, then we have the New Testament, which, is combined, which is, has all of his teaching, and then the early church teachings as well. So when Jesus uses this term, law and the prophets, he is speaking about all of the Hebrew scriptures that his hearers would have been familiar with. And they would have understand that he wasn't doing away with God's word, as he said in Matthew chapter 5. That he, was, he had come to fulfill, to make it all be done in him, through him. And then today he says that whenever we treat others the way that we desire to be treated, we are fulfilling the law and the prophets that's what the law and prophets are supposed to teach us to do so if we go back and look at his full sermon on the mountain i'm not going to read it all you're, you're welcome to go back to matthew chapter 5 and begin reading there through today's teaching in matthew chapter 7 i want to give you the short version here if we look back at all of his sermon here he teaches us to be righteous, to be aware of our thoughts and our heart toward others. That's what it all has to do with. How we treat others, how we look at others, how we act ourselves. Some of those teachings include that murder begins in the heart. Remember, he said if we've hated somebody, then we've murdered them. Adultery begins in the mind. If we've even thought about or lusted about somebody in our mind and we're married, then we have lusted, we have committed adultery against our spouse. And then he also teaches us to remain unified to our spouse, which kind of goes along with the next one about keeping our oaths. 
but his disdain for divorce itself because what God has brought together, let no man separate. And then be good, or hold on, excuse me, tell the truth, keep your promises. Again, being honest people as we should be. And if we make a promise, make it simple. Don't swear by anything. Just make your word be your word. And then be good and love even those that are evil to you. Do not repay evil with evil. Love even your enemy. And then he gets into the righteous life of ours where he talks about the kingdom of heaven and he tells us to be focused on heaven and not the attention of others. When we pray, make sure that we are praying to God for God and not in a way that is gaining attention from others. Whenever we give, give generously. But don't let others know what you're giving to make a big scene for yourself. When we pray, go in our closet and pray. We don't have to go out and make a big scene about it. Judge not. Be careful. Be wise about how you judge others. Don't condemn. And then last week we looked at making your requests known. You know, God wants to hear from his children. He asks us to bring to him our request. And then we trust that he will give us what he knows is best for us. And then we get into today's teaching, which is treat others how we want to be treating. So if we apply his words, looking back at that entire teaching on the mount, how shall this teach us? How shall we use this and apply this into treating others? Again, murder, be careful not to hate, any, hate anyone. Adultery, be careful in how you look at another person. Divorce, keep your oath to your spouse. Tell the truth, keep your oath. Respect others enough to keep your word. Be good and love even those that are evil. Show mercy, grace, and love to others. Kingdom-focused living, doing right not for attention, but because it is right and good. Judging others, do not condemn. Be wise, judge with the right heart and mind. Make your request known, do your part, but also make known to God and to others your needs. And then he says, do these things for this is the law and the prophets. And so he's wrapped up this entire idea of being a biblical believer, being a follower of Christ, trying to live like him. He's wrapped them up in one sermon which Matthew has recorded in two chapters worth. But then he has also, later on in Matthew, we will see where he has combined all of this teaching that fulfills the law and the prophets in one little section, a couple verses, one statement. And we call that the great commandment. And it's found in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 40. Jesus has taken this way of living and he says, if you do this, you will fulfill the law and the prophets. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love God first. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And then he says that all-inclusive statement, he says, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Again, everything we've looked at here in the, in the Sermon on the Mount, teaching us how to live, how to love, how to love others, how to behave, how to be kingdom-focused, how to be trusting of God and not seeking men's approval, man's approval, but living out our faith because it is right, and loving others, it all fulfills the law and the prophets. So doing unto others. So how do we wrap up in his word for us to do unto others? Again, so, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also for them or to them, for this is the law and the prophets. And I dare say this speaks to the character traits that is being taught throughout the sermon. Love, respect, 
mercy, grace, humility, generosity. These would be just a few of the things that are mentioned or taught about through Jesus in his Sermon on the Mount. So if we go back to just his final statement and point back to his teaching on asking and receiving, I believe we also see the answer there where he where we see a glimpse of how we desire the Lord to treat us and how we should treat others as a good father, which he says, what kind you know, if he know, if we know how to be a good father as a human, even though we are inclination inclined to do evil, yet we know how to do good for our children. How much more so does he who will give us what we need, what is best, and that is out of his love, mercy, and grace for us. Though he desires our love back to him, he gives us his love first. He takes his principle of do unto others how you would have them do to you, and he lives it out for us. 1 John 4.10 says, And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation, meaning the payment, for our sins. So he loved us first. He exemplified this, this idea of doing first what he desires us to do for him. He loved us because he desires us to love him. He made the first move, and you and I are being taught to do the same. If we want someone to treat us well or to treat others well, then we need to be willing ourselves to do it first. We find this whole principle also in 1 John 4. Beloved. Looking at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And then here's the verse I just quoted a minute ago. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us first and sent his son to be the payment or the propitiation for our sins. So, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love is perfected in us. So let us love one another because God first loved us. It is then that we fulfill God's law and his teaching in the prophets. As Jesus says, because we have loved him and loved others. Much of Jesus' commands had to do with us making the first move. It says, forgive lest you not be forgiven. Show mercy because I have shown mercy. Love as I have loved you. The command is on us to make that first move when it comes to do with our relationship with others. Even if they have wronged us, our reaction is not to be what we want to do, but it should be what we want them to do to us. We are to react in kind to how we aren't to react in kind to how we are treated. We are to act in the way that we desire to be treated. He not only commands it of us, but he himself demonstrated it for us. Because even as his people, you and I, we turned away from God. We denied his love. We denied his being God, being deserving of our obedience, and we decided to please ourselves, yet He has loved us. His love has never stopped for us. And the Bible says that if we have not believed and trusted in Him, then we are enemies of God. And even as His enemies, 
he still gave us his son on the cross in an effect or effort to help us come back to him. And even Jesus, while hanging on the cross by the ones that put him there, he too demonstrated to love first. Because while he was hanging there for you and I, he prayed that those that put him there would be forgiven. So for they know not what they do. So even while on the cross, he demonstrated to do unto others as we would wish that they would do unto us. He didn't react, but instead acted in the way that he wanted them to behave. God is love. He has given us his love. So much so that he desires that none of us perish. He made the first move. He created us in his own image. He poured himself into us and yet we disobeyed him. And then he made the move again by giving us his son to cover our sins in his blood to make us right with God through our acceptance of the work of Jesus on the cross. 2 Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, talking about his returning, his coming into judgment, or his ending all things as we know it and bringing us into his kingdom eventually, eradicating evil from the earth. Why has he not done so yet? For 2 Peter 3, 9 tells us because he is patient toward us. Not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. He is waiting for us to turn to him, giving us the opportunity to respond in kind to the way that he has showed his love to us. For us to return our love back to him by accepting his son, Jesus Christ, as our payment for sins believing, trusting, and obeying every day, seeking to live for him to give God the glory he deserves. He made the first move. The second is ours, to accept or reject. And it's always my hope that you accept the love of God for yourself. Because he loves you enough that he made the first move. Friends, that's my prayer. I pray this has been a blessing and encouragement to you. If it has been, do me a favor. Click share, click like. The algorithms, YouTube, Facebook, all that will help this word get out more to those that need to hear it. And that's always my hope and prayer is that this would reach those that need to hear it. So they too can hear the gospel that God loves them and gave his only son for them. Friends, let us know where you're listening from, where you're seeing this from. Always interested to know where it is that you see this video. If you have a prayer request, shoot us a message. We'd be glad and honored to pray for you. Friends, I pray you have a blessed week. Keep the people in Louisiana in your prayers as they are facing the hurricane coming upon them very soon. I guess right now, probably. Friends, we're praying for them. We're praying for God's protection over them. And then we will also see his church respond as we go there and help. Friends, have a blessed week in Christ. Amen.